everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, today I'm going to present the third part of my presentation about uh, surface mount devices. This time this will be practical part. I will show you how easy it is to actually uh, build a board with surface mount devices. Uh, if you need me, if you need additional explanations, if you need, if you cannot see something, please let me know. Uh, I have these cameras. I try to, I try to set it up as well as possible to make everything visible. But if there are problems, please let me know. So first of all, this is our board, and today we're gonna build a small uh, amplifier uh, based on MMIC device. So this is simple, this is just a device, uh, voltage regulator and a little bit additional components. Simple, quick and perfect for such a short uh, class. Uh, so first thing, I, by the way, please don't be scared about all these devices here. What I'm, do, what I'm gonna do today is total overkill. I would never use that many tools for this, this board, but I want to show you how to use them, how you can take advantage of them. If you, have, if you don't have them, fine. You can get away with, without pretty much most of them. If you have them, uh, I, will, I want to show you how to use them. The two tools that, the one tools that you must have is good soldering iron. You should have had it long time ago, uh, so I'm not even gonna uh, discuss it. Uh, tools that I highly recommend is hot air. This is the station here. I'm not gonna lift it up, show it because it will create too much mess. But you show, but you saw it last time. So these two tools are basic tools for uh, pretty much all your surface mount devices needs. And most of the boards you will assemble using only these tools. Uh, another tool which is good to have is Trekiter. Again, I showed it uh, last time. I'm not gonna show it again. I show it. I, I will show it in action. Uh, this is very good for some boards, for boards with a little bit more delicate components. If we if we will have time, I will show you what will happen if you uh, if you try to solder an electrolytic capacitor just with hot air. Uh, one thing that's tiny part that I highly recommend to get is this. <laughs> uh, you know what it is. Even if you don't break the part immediately, you can still wear it. Static charges may wear it and it can fail prematurely or can not function properly. So remember, right now in summer it's not that uh, that necessary because it's humid, but in summer, don't even touch any electronic device without it. In winter. Uh, okay, any questions? Good, so let's start. Uh, this is my board. Oh, yes, you can see it. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to set it up. So, first thing, flux. Cover all the soldering parts with flux. Just go crazy. Where can you get that flux, by the way? Is that particular uh, piece? Micro Center? Yeah, yeah it's it, it over here. Yeah. I, 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 I got like it from that my that I, I got it from Micro Center. You can get it on eBay, you can get it anywhere. Uh, yeah. RMA 186. Uh, this one. Which one? RMA 186. You use? Rosin mildly activated 186. This is uh, MG Chemicals 8, uh, 3 or I think 3, 5. Okay, yeah, this, this is. Oh, also yeah. uh, This is not, not clean. You should clean after this after using this box. So remember to clean, 
Uh, I have another one, no clean. This is total crap. Uh, stays on the board for like 10 seconds. Well, pe people who work with uh, EGAs, people who fix uh, PlayStations, uh, Xboxes, they love it because this is no clean, uh, leaves pretty much no residues, perfect for use uh, under BGAs. But for your like, everyday use, no, it's, it's, it's not good. Is that, does that need to be refrigerated? Uh, for me? Someone asked, does that need to be refrigerated? No. I apologize. Uh, no, 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 it's a, it's a very good question. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, you don't have to eat, fr uh, refrigerate this. What you have to refrigerate is uh, sold soldering paste. So if you get soldering paste, this is special paste for uh, using with stencils. Uh, you can also apply it with uh, 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 special device to uh, apply it. I, I showed it during, uh, during the previous presentation. Uh, if you use solder paste, you should keep it refrigerated because otherwise the, it, what, what is solder paste? These are tiny balls of solder mixed with flux. And this flux will evaporate. Uh, the solder paste will, will, will dry and uh, it will not be uh, rock solid, but it will be much more difficult to use. And uh, uh, you actually may have, if, if you use stencil, you may have big problems to use it to the stencil because it will not uh, stick to the board, it will just uh, uh, get out of the holes and uh, it, it, it will not work, work well. It doesn't, doesn't mean that it's unusable. It is just it's not uh, good as, as new. Uh, so this one you don't have to refrigerate. Next thing you should, you should do is to put solder on the solder pads. So just Regular soldering iron, regular solder, put some solder on the tip. It's a little bit difficult to apply it here. If you have problems, if you wear, if you wear the flags, just apply more. As you can see, even a lot more. You might want to put your, your hand is in the way of one of the cameras. Oh, okay. Thank you. Better. Yes, I need tiny solder spots. It's not only pretending, I need the solder there. <coughs> That's what I mean by pretending. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I really don't know how this board will come out because it's very difficult. To work here. Yeah, I left too much solder here. Uh, I will try to get rid of it. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, this should be enough. Uh, yes, and I will be able to show you one thing you should be careful about and that you should avoid. 
Okay, so we have solder on the parts. Did you did you take the board and move it so it's a little bit closer around the camera, just to, just so we can see see what you just did? Yeah. Other what, what's this one? No, I, yeah, you got you got to turn it. Turn, turn the board normal. Turn the normal. board itself. Turn the there you go. Yeah, but I, I wanted to show you the the solder spots. So you have to draw it. Yeah, so you can see the board and look that these are actually tiny solder bolts. So it's not, you have to leave some solder there because you will use the solder uh, to mount the component. And here there's way, here this component it has way too much solder. So you try to uh, collect it, but you should never put this much. Okay, this is better. sure if you can see it but there was a huge ball of solder here in the middle and I scraped it. <coughs> okay, can everybody see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's put flux again. <coughs> doesn't have to be that much, but it really doesn't help. So, uh, your basic tool is this. Scissors. <laughs> Cheap, simple, convenient. That is one tool that is as far as important as here. Yes. <laughs> Don't drink salt. But you can live without it. I will show you what to use instead of. However, it's pretty difficult to use with, uh, to live without. So let's put components. Uh, what should I start with? Maybe some resistors. So, these are SMD resistors. How big are those particular resistors? Uh, they, they are pretty big, these are 0805. Uh, they are comparable with some uh, through all components. So they, they are pretty big. I have small parts here, I will show you later. Actually, let me show you, show you now. Just keep, up, keep going, Jeff. Just to let you guys know, you see a 220 like you see on the resistors? It's a 2 and a 2 and the number of zeros afterwards. It's almost like a red, red. Black. Yeah, these are 20, 22 ohms. So 22 ohms, most people don't know. So 220 to 220 are 22 ohms. You see that a lot of the circuits on. That's why I just wanted to let you describe more of that.
Okay, so here you will see comparison of two sizes. These are two sizes of the components. Uh, one is the resistor, this is 0805. It's, this should be 0604, uh, the other component, but let, let me see. Um, um, this for sure, 0604. USB microscope. So you can, it's a tiny camera and you can see the oh, okay, that's what we're seeing and it's not Yes, sure. yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, screen is bad. Okay, so here you can see comparison of two sizes of components. The, this one, this is one of the 22 ohm resistors which, which I showed you before. This is 0804, uh, 06. Uh, this parts in the tape, these are capacitors and they are uh, 06, 04. So this is ne next smaller size. All 806 are trivial to handle, all 604 are a little bit more challenging, but still not impossible. Cable 0402, I'm not sure if I will try it. For sure not here. Sharp enough? Mm. I think so. So let me put the resistors first. What you should also make sure is that the tip of the tweezers is clean because if you don't clean it, the parts will stick. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty difficult to get them. <coughs> is the flux sticky enough to keep the parts from moving? Uh, this one, yes, it is. Okay, so resistors done. Uh, these are capacitors. And they come in tape and they have on top foil which you have to peel and get the part off. And I really don't like those paper tapes because it's difficult to take the parts out, so I will just Put them on. on the table. And what should what you should always remember, keep the parts separated. 
because they have no markings, if you mix them, you will have a problem. <laughs> Even if they are marked, you won't see them very well. <laughs> well, resistors do have, uh, those capacitors don't. If you have not too much time, you can measure them, so everything's okay. Students, Timon, oh, sorry. I can do it with camera, it will be faster. When you're doing this at home, do you use the, micro, the USB microscope to no. see what you're doing? No, no. It's a pain because uh, you don't look at the, at the place where you work. Also, this is too big, uh, on the screen you have too big image, so you have don't, don't have the perception of that. So what do you do when you get old like us? Uh, <laughs> then I will worry. <laughs> Purple tubes. Actually, there are, there are um, I work with them, and I have these little magnifiers that they buy at home and office max. They have LED lights, and you use these. I have like two of them, and you can actually keep your surface not with those. Because yeah. that's what I would use. Get a loop like, like my dentist used. Yeah. For low hundreds of dollars, you can get on the stereoscopic microscope, which are good for SMD work. And when you will be looking for a microscope, make sure that uh, it has pretty big working distance. So you don't want a microscope like the biologists do, where the lens almost touches uh, the object. Because then you will have, shoot, I still want to move this. So then you will not have uh, enough uh, space to work with. Of course, you can go crazy and get the microscope for like a few thousand bucks, but I'm not sure if you want to do it for just copy work. Okay, so I'm done with capacitors, so now I go with. When the, you, you just started a capacitor? No, I didn't solder it yet. I just placed it. So it's it holds on the sticky flux. Okay. I, I can move the board. The, the flux is so sticky that it keeps the parts in place. So they will not fall. <coughs> part is especially tricky to install so I will do it off camera again. You don't have to place the parts exactly in the parts. Uh, the surface tension of the solder will actually pull them in place. Actually, that's the problem with sticky tip of the tweezers. That it okay. Let's say it's okay. So now I'm putting away the tweezers. I'm going to use the um, 
de, de avea critica. That sounds suspiciously like a tool that my dentist uses. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just a small compressor with, with just one pair. Okay. Okay. So I have the parts here, and this is the pickup. Right now, you can see it doesn't do anything, as there's a tiny. Yeah, there's a tiny hole here. Can you see it? Yeah. So, yeah, so now I just. Ah. Okay, it's, it's, too, it's too heavy. Yeah, I, I, I would have to. I would have to use different. To different. Uh, a different end for this, so let me use some tweezers. What part did you just put down exactly? Uh, ferrite bead. A what? Ferrite bead. Ferrite. Ferrite. One more capacitor. Yes, you can. You can see that these parts are huge. This is, uh, I think, twelve ten. Yeah, twelve ten. Time for some protectors. Remember? <clears throat> Especially the amplified. This is a uh, very sensitive device. But let's let me put a lot of regulator. Uh, I have to change the key. It has connector for grounding. Yeah. So it has connector in the back for grounding. But you, you, you can ground it to pretty much anything.
as soon as you open the hole, it actually releases the part. <coughs> So when you work at your desk, you would, you would just pick it up from the tape. Here it's easier for me to just put it on the on the paper. Okay, so now we have the parts placed, you have to solder them. And uh, I will use crack heater to crack the board. For this board, you don't have to do it. Uh, but if you have boards with delicate components or with big ground planes, I really recommend using crack heater. I want, to, I want to know to what temperature the board, the board is heated. I don't want to heat it too much. I don't want to actually solder the parts. I want to only to make, get, make, make it uh, warmer. We'll try to install the probe somewhere on top of the board because this is what is important for us. I picked up on it. So now you can see I shake the board, move it around, the components stay in place. Well, it 
it wouldn't be a bad thing that some people actually use hot plates to solder, just you have less control over it. If you, when you use uh, hot air, you can actually pretty well control how, how long it is at the melting point. point. But if you solder on melting, on a hot plate, uh, it's a little bit difficult to control. But it would, well, it would be one of the techniques, but uh, then you wouldn't use hot air. Okay, let me see this one. Now this is infrared preheater. So oh, the, you preheater. Preheater. You have a fan blowing hot air? No. You have you have you have you have heater ceramic heater underneath, and it just uh, uses infrared radiation. Uh, there are preheaters which use uh, hot air, but. Uh, Yeah, this is Celsius. Just to throw a couple of plugs into the meter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so this is just <coughs> radial multimeter with uh, temperature uh, measurement. That's it. So what is the uh, USB microscope you're using? Uh, this one? Yeah. I got it from Deal Extreme. From where? Deal Extreme, Chinese website. Looks like so. I just looked some up on eBay. They're about fifteen bucks or something like that. Yeah, this one I got uh, a very expensive model. I paid, I think, fifty or seventy bucks. Yeah. What's the working distance on that? I see. Uh, there's from zero to infinity. Oh, and all that mega focus. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you saw this in the novel. Are you shooting for 750 degrees? Uh, no, 160, 170. About what? 160, 170 Celsius. Yeah, it's, 70, it's like 73 Celsius, right? Not 730. Celsius. Celsius. Yeah. Okay. So that was started at about 27C, yeah. now from like 7, about 8, 7, 8, 8, 8. So, I. While we're waiting, uh, let me tell you a little bit no, I can't more. See that. Let me tell you a, a little bit more about part management. This is something you really have to work out if you want to work, work with uh, SMD components, because if you mix them, you can pretty much throw them away and buy new ones. Uh, this actually works very well. These are pill boxes. They are perfect. Uh, you have four <coughs> boxes. You can close them. Uh, they, the components don't spill. They are very good. Uh, the component, components, when you buy them, they, ca they come on tapes. So this is such a tape. You have, uh, this is paper tape. You have plastic tapes. Uh, yes, this is plastic tape. This is plastic tapes, this is how it looks. You have tiny pits with components in it. And so this is actually designed to be used with uh, automatic feeders. When you have the pick and place machines, they use such tapes, but they are not loose like this. They come on a spool. This is one of such spools. It's actually tiny. This is probably for a, a thousand components. Uh, usually when you build uh, big boards, you have much bigger spools about this one, that big. Uh, they can hold uh, five, six thousand components. I don't know what are the standard sizes. Uh, for experimenting, 
I got also such set of resistors. This is set of 1% resistors. And they are organized like this. Again, small boxes with covers, labels, very good, very convenient. Uh, integrated circuits, uh, uh, semiconductors, they usually also come uh, in tapes, also thick uh, pin headers, they also come in tapes. Everything is designed to be used with the place machine mounted automatically. And we have a roll of NJ8828 28s of that big around, mm -hmm. plus 28 pin uh, circuits. Wow. So can you find these in hobbyist sizes on eBay? Or eBay. Uh, actually, the, the sets of resistors, capacitors I got from eBay. Uh, the other components, yeah, th this is also from eBay. Uh, this is from DigiKey. Nah, this came loose. So I, I, I think it's okay. It's done. So let me solder the components. So. You should really mount the thermocouple much better than this. Well, what did you preheat that for? 200 what Celsius? Uh, I usually heat it up to um, 160, 170. Celsius. 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 Okay. I don't use scale, which doesn't have any physical meanings. So look at the components. You can see the flux boiling. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, you will see that they, yeah, you will see that they will jump in place. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, they start to jump in place. This is probably this will be probably the worst board I have ever built. <laughs> <laughs> it don't look bad, it's the worst board. <laughs> now would you recommend using something like the uh, Toaster oven reflow oven that you talked about. Uh, reflow oven, yes. Toast, uh, yeah, yeah. This this is good. And this uh, actually has this advantage that uh, heats the board evenly. So here, even though I preheat the board, I still okay. The resistors. I'm not sure if they soldered well. I don't, I don't, we, we, I didn't see it move, but I think that ferric feed was, so yeah, ferric feed is, yes, it's it fine, it did work. yeah, but, well, yeah, I, now I see that one of the, it was, it was, it was a little more square, yeah, yeah. because that, it, was, it was, it was, it was, it was leaning, now it's square, so it, yeah, it did settle in, yeah, they did, the one to the lower left by our point of view, Actually, I have to fix. Yeah, the lower, the lower left, the lower left is very deep, and that did move. This one, yeah, this is soldered. Okay, it, it moved. Yeah, 
I was cocked before when you first started soldering and moved in. Yeah, it was cocked when I moved in. It said the. It did solder. Nice. What temperature is the air? Do you know what it's saying? It's. I have no idea. Oh. Uh, I just set it up, set it so it, so it melts the solder and doesn't blow the components. How many times have you branded yourself? Uh, none. <laughs> Okay, did, did you watch this capacitor here? It just popped in. This one also should pop in. Oh, just popped in. Uh, this part with dot. Okay. If I was doing it on my table, I would be done. Uh, this board, yeah, the resistor didn't come out well. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was planning to uh, try this board if it works, but actually I said it, it's not gonna work, but it's not a problem with the, with the process. It's, a, it's just, just the problem with the setup here. But most of the parts actually are good. So, okay, so let, let me wait until it cools down. Okay, everything switched off, everything switched off. Uh, okay, so this board is not gonna work, but I have another board which works, identical, and I'm gonna show you how it works. <laughs> So the fact that this, this board doesn't work doesn't is not gonna stop me from showing you how it works. It's like the cooking shows where they've got one already made and the other. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they know what they're doing. <laughs> Actually, it, it never happened to me with uh, soldering using uh, just putting solder on off. It uh, must it, it is happening quite often with uh, solder paste, probably because it has higher uh, surface tension. Well, well, one of the problems with the tombstone is, is if you have to have a chemistry on both sides of the components, so that the solder melts at the same mm -hmm. rate. If one melts sooner than the other, one, uh, yes, but. Uh, yeah, but so, regular, irregular solder probably has too low surface tension to actually pull the component. So it pulls in place, but doesn't pull it up. So this is identical board, just with components already uh, mounted, and this one works. I just have to solder the the power, power lead. You know what, I have one more experiment to show, so let me leave it for the end. So what I'm using right now is electrolytic capacitor. 
this is how it looks. So, this is the capacitor. What is important is underneath. Look at these parts here. They are way under the capacitor. And uh, the problem is that when you use only uh, hot air, it blows the air from the top. So the air blows on top of the capacitor here, and you have to, to solder it, you have to actually heat up the bottom of the capacitor. So what happens when you solder it? You hit the capacitor. You have to hit the entire capaci capacitor and the entire the scan to actually heat up the parts to the point where the solder lands. <coughs> this will most likely break the capacitor. This is, I pretty much never use hot air to solder such capacitors. If I don't use the preheater, I leave the uh, capacitors out and then I solder them using soldering iron. But what will happen if you actually try to solder without hot air, without preheater and using only hot air? Uh, first I need to heat up the soldering iron again. How much time do I have? How much time do I have? Nine o'clock now. Oh. Okay, so we can finish now or can we actually get longer? How much time do you need? Uh five minutes. Go. Okay. Keeping the capacitor. First of all, you will see that it, it will take forever. Second, I hope I will be able to show how damaged it is after the fact. And it just flipped, it doesn't. Oh, I forgot to. One thing flux. It takes so long because I have to heat up the board and I have to heat up the capacitor to the point that uh, the bottom is at the melting temperature, so the melting temperature. Now it's done. Did you see how it was setting, setting down? Okay, now it's fully done. I 
know. I know. Oh yeah, you just watch it across. Mm -hmm. But I'm also looking at this. It looks smaller up here. Yep. So and there is not too much damage here. But uh, what usually happens is sometimes there is uh, like a pl plastic wrapping around. It melts. Also, this black plastic on top, this also melts. So many times when I tried to solder such capacitors with just hot air, I was seeing mel mel uh, uh, melted wrapping, melted solder at the base. So if you use such capacitors, capacitors don't solder them with just hot air. You can do it with with preheater. It works fine because you have to blow a little, just just <coughs> a little bit of the hot air. But just with hot air, you can do it. How about writing an iron? Do you use an iron to like that? Yes. So what I would do, I would I would first of all I would not thin uh, the parts, and then I would just go iron on this side, on this side. That's it. Okay, I th think <coughs> we don't have much more time, so that's it.